Uh, welcome to our uh, eighth day together. I'm really enjoying uh, sharing my knowledge and my understanding of the world's religions and of uh, the writings of uh, Sir John Templeton with you. Our theme for today comes directly from uh, for, from Sir John's book is uh, pretty stirring, actually, and I hope I don't uh, lose half my audience. It's it can be stated very simply as a moral wake up call. And the spiritual law for today, a direct quote, ethics and spiritual principles should be the absolute basis of everything we do in life. And uh, what we hear in the, in, this, uh, in the spiritual law is a moral realism, uh, uh, the, the exact opposite of any kind of relativism or um, lack of seriousness about uh, our ethical, our moral choices. Um, because, as, as I said in an earlier lecture, uh, Sir John uh, Templeton can really be seen as a moralist. I think this is one of his uh, great roles, uh, a moralist and a spiritual teacher, as well as a, a brilliant investor and financier. Um, and we have been, I have been stressing the spiritual side of his writings, but I also want to remind everyone in our audience that, in fact, he, he really saw himself as, as trying to call people to live ethically the best lives they could. And, and how do you live the best life ethically that you can? It's by making informed choices, choices that are informed by, well, let's take a moment, a couple of minutes to say what informs our, our choice making as, as ethical beings. So as a moralist, uh, we can place uh, uh, Sir John in the category of, of figures such as uh, the great Confucius of the, uh, of, of the Chinese traditions. And in our, in our contemporary period in the West, we can also place him in a category similar to figures such as Lawrence Kohlberg uh, and, uh, and Carol Gilligan, uh, uh, figures, uh, eth ethical thinkers uh, who developed developmental models of how people become uh, ethically mature. This is not the kind of phraseology we often hear, the idea of becoming ethically mature, but it, it's implicit in the developmental model that was developed by Kohlberg, um, drawing upon uh, other figures before him, uh, uh, such as uh, Piaget, who was a child psycho developmental psychologist. Um, but Kohlberg distinguished between three basic stages. They're broken up into substages. There's a pre-conventional morality, conventional morality, and post-conventional morality. And pre-conventional morality is generally associated with, with children, um, and these are uh, this is the kind of ethics or moral principles that are based mostly upon fear of punishment. Um, we, we do what we do only when we're driven to do it. There's an old saying that uh, people often uh, don't change until they feel the heat. And so this would definitely refer to that stage of a kind of childish a fear of punishment by an authority figure. At the second stage, most of us certainly go through that phase. Perhaps the second stage, the conventional level, is where we do what we do because of our, our parents and because of our respect for others and because we, we do it because others do it. And in this case, we're not so much afraid of punishment as we fear being uh, ostracized or excluded or, or judged by people we care about. And the third stage, which for Kohlberg and Gilligan and others, would be the state stage of, uh, of mature ethical, uh, of a mature ethical person, is the post-conventional level. And at the post-conventional level, it's not that we make up our own rules. In a sense, we do. But we make them up on the basis of broad experience. And not only broad experience, but also a, a kind of openness of mind to differing perspectives. Again, we can hear the echoes of the humble approach uh, in this uh, take on, on moral maturity, on ethical maturity. Um, it, and what, we, what guides us at this le level, this sixth level of, of post-conventional um, morality or ethics, is, is the recognition of universal principles. And that is, we, we start to recognize that beyond my own personal interests and whims and fancies and beyond the often and sometimes unethical concerns of my peer group, 
There is actually a universal standard of, of ethical behavior. And the truly post-conventional, ethically mature person listens for that, hearkens to that, if you will, uh, and is actuated and moved by, from that level of, of moral, uh, moral insight. Um, a, great, uh, a great example was given to us uh, by uh, Confucius himself. And Confucius uh, and, uh, said, and he set up, if you will, the, the difference between uh, the lower stages of morality when, uh, and Sir John uh, retells the story in his own words, the disciple, a disciple said to uh, uh, another f ancient philosopher uh, in, in that period, uh, a, a philosophical rival of, uh, of one of Confucius's followers, he said that human nature is neither good nor bad. Some say human nature can be turned to be good or bad. And so he gave an example of how malleable our, our ethical decision-making can be when we're at, at levels lower than the post-conventional level. Um, when, uh, when sage kings Wen and Wu were in power, the people loved virtue because um, they, were, uh, they, were, they were good kings. And when um, another uh, pair of kings were in power, the people indulged in violence because the kings were wicked. And, uh, and so we see that people's, uh, in this case, in this example, people are influenced often, if they're not at the higher levels of ethical maturity, by what people around them do. And, you know, this is a problem that um, Sir John saw afflicts uh, many people. It's that they actually are too easily influenced in their decision-making by the models that are provided for them, perhaps by their friends and family, but I would say in our society much more significantly the models that we uh, see, that we encounter in mass media and in social media. And this was a special theme of Sir John's, and you can see it. It's a subcurrent that runs through the book. He was proud of the fact that, as he said, he never, he didn't watch more than 20 or 30 hours of television in his life, except for a, a religious broadcasting. And that's a rather high standard, perhaps, to maintain, but he was wary of the kind of role modeling influence that could come through a kind of unfiltered uh, consumption of mass media. So how then can we develop towards the post-conventional level of morality or of ethics? And, and the, the sage, the great sage of Kung Fu Tzu, or Confucius, to use his Western Latin name, gave us the, the developmental uh, uh, stages that he himself went through in a memorable, memorable passage from the Analects where he wrote, At 15, I set my heart on learning. At 30, I took my stand. At 40, I came to be free from doubts. At 50, I understood the decree of heaven. I understood the workings of dharma. At 60, my ear was attuned. And at 70, I followed my heart's desire without overstepping the line. And, um, of course, when I read those words when I was 30, I probably thought that's a long time to wait to be able to follow one's heart's desire, as I, I do recall thinking that back then. I, I can honestly say that my appreciation of Kung Fu Tzu has, uh, has mellowed and matured over the decades, as I myself have grown older, and I am past 60 now, and I think I do understand what he meant, and that is that uh, as we mature uh, ethically through reflection upon all of our actions, because our actions all have consequences, and if we are sensitive to the demands of, of, of others, their rights, our rights, uh, their needs and our needs, and of course the principle of reciprocity where we uh, try not to do to others what we would not be, have done to ourselves, the so-called golden rule. If we live our lives in light of that, uh, over time, we do come to that stage of post-conventional ethics or morality where we can act intuitively in every circumstance in a way that's appropriate to the context. And this is the kind of moralism that we find uh, running through Sir John's writings, and it's that kind of moralism or it's that kind of uh, moralist or actually ethical educator that Sir John uh, uh, presents in his book.